Hi, hello, welcome back to What The Post. Finally, yeah, I know, it's been a little while, sorry. I made a little community post on why, um, so read that if you're interested. But anyway, it is time to start work on What The Base once again. In the previous video, we made this wave part here and this swing copter, if I can do it, just like so. And I have actually extended this a little bit off camera, as you can see. And that's because I just wanted to start work on the next part. I really didn't want to have to, like, keep building in this exact same style, because I want to change it up for the next bit. I want to change it up a lot. But yeah, for this part, I kind of went with a little bit more claustrophobic because it started to feel more claustrophobic towards the end of the part just before this. And I just used a lot of the designs we already had, plus this little one in here, which I thought looked kind of cool. It's got like the pixel blocks spinning around in there and stuff. I don't know. I like it. So what I want to do today is start work on a dual part. Oh my god. Okay, so I didn't really explain what I was doing in this first part at all. <laughs> I was really tired and my commentary was awful, so I'm gonna do a voiceover, but because I didn't actually, like, show what I was doing very well, when I inevitably run out of footage, I- you get CSGO Surf gameplay. 2015 style, woohoo! Alright, let's get into the building. <laughs> so the first thing I did here is, of course, place down a dual portal. I also discovered that, like, normal game mode portals, you can make this free mode, which I don't use for now, but it'll be important later. Now, because just having a dual cube would be a little bit boring, I decided to make one of them the wave and one of them the UFO. This is something that's done in quite a few levels, but most notably Black Blizzard, and I think Black Blizzard does it really, really well. I also decided to add a little bit of a transition in here with these gravity portals, just because it was a little bit jarring to go straight into a dual wave and UFO, like whoa. Anyway, structuring this part was actually kind of difficult, because the wave naturally wants slopes, and the UFO wants... I don't know, something. But I decided to go for this type of structure here and then have a section where the UFO kind of goes through the structure, which will introduce a little bit of memory, but I want to make it like mostly clear that that's going to happen. And then I can vary up the gameplay a little bit more by adding some stuff like blue portals, which only flip the gravity of the UFO and not the wave. And yes, before you ask, it does it in normal mode as well. I'm not making the same spaghetti cyborg mistake. <laughs> something else I decided to do with the gameplay is add a little platform up here and chuck some D blocks on it, just to make that gap a little bit tighter because because before it was a little bit too easy. And I tried doing something like this, but this went behind the floor and this was too hard. And I just don't really like that type of structuring with the wave anyway. And then I decided I kind of wanted to add some green orbs in here, but force the wave to go through a corridor. But this would be a little bit difficult because I didn't want you to be able to just span through the corridor. So I added this black orb in the middle of the UFO part, which would kill you if you clicked it. So you had to kind of time your clicks with the green orbs while also clicking a certain amount so that the wave would go relatively straight. Now this did take a little bit of tweaking, but in the end I ended up with something I was pretty happy with. Then exiting out of that part, I just added this gap in here, which I know I literally just said I don't really like that type of gap with the wave, but it works in this case, okay? Honestly, it's not bad. It's kind of fun, yeah. You absolutely don't want to focus on the UFO in that duel at all, but it's kind of interesting, yeah. I, I like that. And then have another gap up here, maybe? Yeah, so if you just click once, you don't make it, but if you click twice, hopefully... Yeah, that's all. Oh, that's kind of strange, goofy even. I could probably do some interesting things with the deco, like kind of connecting these in some way, making it one big structure somehow. I don't know, like there's definitely cool things that can be done with this, right? Now I wonder if I put a green portal, will that flip both of them? It does, it flips both things. Now I don't want to keep this a UFO wave duel constantly, like I do want to change it up a little bit. Maybe a spider could be cool. Maybe what I can do is I can chuck a spike in there, so you have to jump as the UFO to avoid that, but then you don't want to click as the spider yet, right? Because as a spider you want to land there, and then you want to do a separate click, it's maybe like there. I kind of like that duh, 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 there. That's kind of neat. My structuring has gone completely out the window, by the way, but I'll I'll work on it later. It's fine, it's fine, yeah. Um, And then what I can do is like a similar thing where the structure does continue down here, but you don't see it until it's like, or no, you do see it, but you can pass through it as the UFO. Okay, something I also really, really want to do is I'm going to make this actually free mode. So we saw you could make that free mode. What does that look like in game? non-existent. Okay, what if I make these free mode then? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's make that free mode and the cube has a free mode as well, I guess. Sure. Yeah, so you can see one of the cubes fly up and the camera follows that cube. If I chuck a few structures there, then the one down the bottom will fall off screen. Let me just build this out a little bit more. I don't know. 
So you can see that one's up there, but the one down the bottom is still there. And I want to have the camera switch between them. All right, so I spent quite a while trying to work out how to get the camera to follow different players. And I kind of got it working, but it just looked a bit weird. And when you jumped, the camera followed too closely. It didn't feel like regular GD camera work. And that was when I realized I can just make the camera not move in the Y direction. So we're down here and then boom. And then we switch players. Yeah, that's the exact effect I wanted. I think that's really, really cool. If we do it right as well, we can have both players on screen at the same time. If the player's kind of ramped up like so, then that'll transition nicely. Let's see if that works. Yes, that's so awesome. I actually love that so much. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much the, like, concept I want to go with here. Obviously, this isn't the exact gameplay I want to do. Before I build the proper gameplay for this part, though, I think I need to do a little bit better with this structuring. I think I want to make this gap a little bit... Ah, uh, that's not that tight. I uh, know I don't want it to be too difficult, but I want it to be difficult enough, right? And then I can go ahead and just do the same kind of structuring that we have going on with the other bit. And then that forces you to focus on the UFO for a bit as well. Yeah, I kind of like that. In terms of this part here, I think this is pretty decent. I can make these just like big block structures that kind of go down like so. I think big block structures can be okay if done right. And then maybe what I could do as well is even take that out and then boom, boom, like this. And even keep with the theme of like the multiple things and then have that kind of go across like that. Mm, yeah, I'm kind of just experimenting until this works. I guess this can like run into that like so, right? Maybe lower that all down by one. That gives it a little bit more symmetry, which I actually kind of like. I tend to naturally stray away from symmetry with structures for some reason, but you know what? Let's lean into it. Bugger it. Why not? I'll keep the pillar design in there somewhere because we will need some pillars because we do have pillars like over here, right? Like we're using a lot bigger block structures than over here. So I might want to incorporate some bigger block structures here as well. Not hundred percent sure yet. Yeah, I do like that. It's a little bit hard, but I kind of like how that's turned out. Yeah, I think that's good. Now I need to fill in the space kind of in between this and this. Let me first of all start off by turning this into a bit more of a block structure. And this is also a block structure. We can't see a huge amount of that, but as you can see, if we go into normal mode, we can see more than one block of it when the ground disappears like that. I really want to do this gap here because it syncs better with the music, but then the spider doesn't make it. Maybe I can sneak in a little jump pad in there. Just a sneaky one. One, just a little one. Whoa, that catapults you a lot higher than I thought it would. Uh, oh, wait, no, there's these like force things now, isn't there? I can set that to just like a little force to push you up. Yeah, then the spider clears that easily. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now it's time to do more of this, which I already said it was time to do that, but um, now it's really time to do that. And for this, what I'm kind of thinking is just kind of blocking those off like that. And then maybe I can do something similar to what I did in a part of Leafwood Falls, which I don't think I have. Yeah, no, I don't have it on here. But I'll show the video in a part of Leafwood Falls, I had like a bunch of just like boxes kind of stacked up with spikes on them. I think that could look really, really cool here. Um, how do I convey that the wave needs to go up here? Because that might not be super obvious for people. It would be nice to have some form of slope-like thing that maybe is just in the background but would connect those. Or just like an effect or something. I don't know. Something to like tell the player, yo, you need to go up this way into Senor Spider. And it would also be really cool to kill the player if the wave does doesn't go up there. I'm not 100% sure how I could do that, probably with collision blocks, but eh, not right now, later. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, right now, because I kind of feel like doing collision block stuff. Okay. Grab a collision block, rotate at 45 degrees. Will this work? Can I just do that with collision blocks or will that not work? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, let's put that on group one. Chuck those going all the way down here. And then I'll grab another one, give that number two and make that one dynamic and just scale it down to like half. Give that a group and then make it follow the player. Yes. Yeah, so now you can see that was following the wave. So now what I can do is chuck down a collision trigger here. Oh, I can set it so that if player two collides with it, oh, I don't even need this follow trigger stuff. I'll get out of here. Okay, well, if player two collides with block one, then we want to activate a thing that just kills you. Is there like a death trigger? I actually don't think there's a kill trigger. New idea, there's gonna be absolutely fire. I'm gonna place a spike down here that's 211, and I'm gonna put a teleport. So it teleports the player to 211, which should just just kill them because it teleports them to a spike. <laughs> okay, the warping doesn't work. So I'm just going to place them down like here outside of this and then just kind of do a staircase like this. So it still kills you if you go the wrong way and that'll be visually indicated. So it's not just like an invisible death trigger, which is cringe. 
But yeah, it still kills you if you go out of it. So let's see if I like actually survive. And then yeah, you can survive if you do it correctly. Okay, cool. Neato. Neato. Well, what I'm gonna do now is just kind of chuck in an extra structure down here. Maybe do a couple of structures to kind of introduce this part over here. And then a pillar there. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to make this interesting. I worry these box structures are gonna be a little bit boring, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If they are boring, that does kind of suck for the deco, and they are a little bit boring, but I think they still could be interesting if we do them right. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not too worried. I think that's cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm just shifting this platform back a little bit because I want to sync it with the music. Yeah, that syncs with the music nicely. Speaking of which, I think we should probably start doing some, like, actual gameplay for this section instead of this. <laughs> I would like to do a blue orb at some point that, like, makes one of the players go off the screen and the other one come in. It would be cool if I could have them both the same gravity, but that just, like, won't really work. Unless I make one, like, a robot. If it's a robot, the gravity's independent. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, uh, robot it is then. <laughs> yes, dude, that is so cool. You have no idea how much I love that. That's actually so awesome. Okay, well, what I can probably do, I want the player to fall through a gap sort of like that. Maybe make it a little bit more forgiving than that. I don't know. I love how the robot just comes out of nowhere. I would like him to maybe even land on that block. So this structure kind of goes along a little bit further and the robot lands on there. So let's shift that maybe two blocks earlier so stupid. It is actually like so stupid, but it's awesome. And then maybe I could do yellow pad that goes into a dash orb. So you need to like hit the dash orb before you go too high with yellow pad. That's memory. That is so memory. That's like a blind click. Okay, I've decided to change the gameplay a little bit so that there's a little bit more room for you to react as the robot falls down. I don't know if it's still enough, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. If you know it's coming, it's enough time to react, but if you don't, it might not be enough. And then just to get my bearings, I want the next part to start here of the gameplay. So yeah, I want to fill this type of gameplay out up until there. And maybe what I can do here is have a dash orb that goes down at 45 degrees and then have another dash orb that you click as the cube at the same time. Yeah, I had a feeling that would happen. Okay, something I do know you can do instead of using H blocks is I can use an options trigger here. So disable the controls there and then here I can re-enable it just like so. Yeah, there he is. That's great. I actually really, really like that. This is goofy gameplay. Like, this is so funny. Okay, so I built this little bit of gameplay here. And then hear me out. What if the robot flies in at the perfect time to click that dash orb as well? <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Unfortunately, it's not super like consistent for where the player goes. I wonder. Okay, I was really hoping I could teleport the players individually, but it, I don't think you can. Just because it's a bit inconsistent with where the robot ends up, I'd love to be able to like teleport them separately a little bit, but I just don't think that's going to happen. That is okay though, because what I can do is if I chuck a green portal in here, that'll probably like reset the gravities. Yeah, so I could do that. I would like to. Oh, I want to have them separate. I want to have them separate. Maybe what I can do is I can use this disable two player control whatever thing and then force the robot to click it late. So even if I buffer that, the robot is still like there. I could make it like way lower down there and then you'll always click that because the options trigger. It's kind of weird. So if you're like holding before you hit the like enable the player control, then it'll act as a regular click. So something like, I don't know, uh, Acheron hold, right? Actually, it's probably a tidal wave hold. You can see if I just hop in, it's not going to work. Like I'm just going to die, right? But if I hold from the start, you can see it looks like I'm playing the level. <laughs> this remix is fire, dude. Oh my God, I'm doing Doing it guys it's a really cool thing actually i kind of like how that behaves and so i'm using that to my full advantage because you have to be holding for this dash orb so naturally the robot will just fly in and then you'll be holding for that one as well which is kind of cool okay i do need to structure some of this but oh my god i want to build this like right now real quick so i'm thinking just like literally just to strip like this up the middle right but that doesn't work because you can see the hitboxes are like right there what i can do is i can make all of these no touch so that they don't have a hitbox essentially and then what i can do is just kind of come along here and then i'll use the oh wait actually check it out we have death blocks so i can scale it down on the y by like a lot and then rotate at 45 
five and then just chuck on a slope there. Okay, so there's our little death hitbox there. So now we can kind of copy paste that. And then all the other structures around are just gonna be like deco structures. I don't think I'm gonna have anything else around it, like purposely try to kill the player. Like this is what will kill the player. That's, uh, dude, that is so weird. And then how evil should I be with this? <laughs> That's kind of, yeah, I do like that actually. That's neat. All right. And then I can make you go through some green portals, which should just reset your gravity. Yeah. So like you can kind of see how that kind of works. I don't really love, oh. maybe I can chuck a blue portal here and a yellow portal there. And then that'll kind of line you up how I want you to be lined up. And I also want you to go mini because yeah, mini. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what I'm going to be taking inspiration for for this next wave part is a wave challenge I played a little while ago. I wonder if I can find this actually. Yeah, here it is. That little bit right there. Did you see that? Yeah, I made a little video on the second channel of just playing some wave challenges. And this was one that I played. And that right there, that little wave section, like the dual mini wave, I thought was super cool. I really liked that one little section. So I'm going to make like a whole small part in what the base. Now I feel like playing some wave challenges. All right, give me a sec. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Now I'm satisfied. <laughs> anyway, um, distractions aside, back to what the base. Maybe instead of doing this, what I can do is just rotate at 45 like that. Half space this guy up a little bit and then just make that go straight so it's not as unforgiving. Because otherwise, let's be real, it's a little bit evil, isn't it? Okay, so I think first of all, I guess I just want to start off with this type of structure. Maybe what I can do instead is have like a little divider in the middle. So you have to go up between that gap there and then go back down and and then do something interesting, yeah. And of course, chuck some D blocks on that and then something like this. Maybe I can do that with like a pillar. Now it's kind of more satisfying when it is like a slope that kind of comes up like that, isn't it? Yeah. How does that play normal mode? I have a feeling that's a little bit too hard, but we'll see how we go. It's not too bad. It is hard though, it is difficult. Maybe I can nerf it a little bit by doing that. I don't know, man. Yeah, I do like that. I think that's good. And then maybe I can chuck just like a regular size portal in there rather and then make you spam through here because that kind of matches the music. That, wow. Like that. Yeah, dude, that's good. I really, really like that little bit of gameplay. Okay. I want to keep it as a jewel for a bit. When do I want to exit the jewel actually? I kind of maybe want to exit the jewel here. So maybe I'll do a jewel ball for a bit and then I'll exit it. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> okay, that would be a really funny way to exit, to be fair. Yeah, so that exits you out. And then you go through an invisible portal here that also has... What's it called? No effects, I think? Oh, that doesn't work the same in normal mode. Damn it. It would have to be something like that where it's upside down. Yeah. Okay, so I know this video is like entirely about gameplay, but I just made a bunch of gameplay without commentating. <laughs> That's okay though, because this gameplay is completely structureless. There is no structures, zero structuring in this part whatsoever. So we still need to do that. But I do want to showcase everything from this cube jewel here onwards so far. There we go, boom. And then that is the entire drop gameplay done. Yeah, we've got the first half of the drop completely decorated and the second half gameplay done. I just need to do the structuring here. So I guess we should probably move on to that. Okay, so I think first things first, I actually kind of want to start with this wave part here. Sounds a bit weird, yeah, but you can see we've got a lot of like these slopey structures here. And then over here we have very squarish structures. So I want to transition between those relatively smoothly. So I want to like start the transition in this wave here. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, I also added a little zoom effect there because I thought it looked cool. <laughs> so like I said earlier, I want this middle thing to be the thing that kills you. Like I don't want to have a structure here that's like, oh, you got to get over that structure so it doesn't kill you. I don't want that at all. I want the structures down here to be like, you die anyway to this middle thing before you die to the structure. So maybe I can do something like, yeah, so you die to this top bit before you die to that structure. I like that. 
Oi! Run away from me like that? Come back here, structure. Okay, so I can do something like that, and then maybe chuck that on the top as well. I don't know. I don't know if I like that, though. I do want to do something interesting with the background here, kind of like something like Shocksidian would do. I take a lot of inspiration from Shocksidian now. Anyway, Roarim is like a banger shock level. I've made reference to this level so many times in building videos, but you can kind of see, especially in this part, like the background and foreground are kind of melded in together, and they kind of both help each other a lot. So you can see, like, with this double spike here, there's like this structure that's kind of in the background coming up from that. I want to do something like that in this dual wave here. I think that would be kind of fire, especially since this is just like a single line. I want to like decorate around that properly, right? So, well, I'm going to leave that for now. And I guess it's time to try and tackle this part, which I'm kind of afraid for. So I guess we should start adding some spikes around the place. Maybe not there. Well, that does need to be a late click, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I do want to chuck a spike like there though, because that does need to be a late click. I could do another one of these structures where you kind of go through it. I don't know. I don't want to repeat the same structuring for too long. I guess this isn't that long. I don't know. I do want to be careful with how much I'm repeating the structuring, but I feel like we need to do something a bit cooler here, a little bit more interesting. What if I do something like this? Hmm. <laughs> that could work though. That could be interesting. Kind of build some slopey structures that connect these things together could be kind of interesting. And then we have a really long structure here, but I can probably do something interesting by like supporting it like this and then make that go into a bigger structure like this. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's a little bit off center though. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh no. Dude, the face structures are back. It's like a little dude holding up the platform. That's awesome. I'm keeping that. This is a goofy level. I can do what I want. Cool. And then I might add another pillar here. And then I could even have this move into place just to like bring attention to this jump here, I guess. I don't know. I want to do something in the deco to like say, hey, this is where you need to go. <laughs> there needs to be something in the middle here because this is a little bit like nothing burger. Maybe I could do another structure that kind of comes down like this and then goes into to, I don't know, this, and then that connects like that. Yeah, that'll work. What if I do another face here, right? And this time it's like Statue of Liberty. It's like holding a torch thing. Hang on. Do you like my Statue of Liberty? <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid, but it is so awesome. I love that. Okay. I'm not overdoing it. I don't think. I don't think I'm overdoing it with these like little humanoid structure things. <laughs> it, it's, it's goofy. This is a goofy level. It's goofy. <laughs> It's so, it's so stupid. It is so stupid, but it's so awesome. I love it. This is a very harsh transition from this into this. This structuring is very simple, and then it goes into this, which is a lot more complicated with slopes and stuff. So I guess the structuring varies a lot anyway. Maybe I can transition it a little bit by adding in one of these guys. I don't know. I can always shift stuff around when I start decorating. It's kind of almost a little bit hard to do structuring before you, like, do any deco, right? I don't know. I think I'm going to leave that for now. I'm pretty happy with it. Now it's time to structure this dual ball going out of the jewel. First things first, there's kind of a weird thing where you don't have to click the orb. Like you can just kind of, yeah, like you can kind of see how it almost works there. I've been tweaking this dual ball transition quite a bit to try and get it to work because it's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so now I want to make sure that you click that black orb because otherwise you'll die here. I might transition that structure out just the same way it goes in with these slopey bits. Something else I might do just to be a little bit nicer about this part here is chuck a bigger structure here and then add some D blocks on that just so that you can like slide instead of going like all the way down. I also kind of want to run with these little square structures a little bit more because I kind of like them. Maybe I can use some move triggers to move them around a bit. 2.0 style, don't worry. I'm not going to do that too much. And I still want some solid structures in there as well, which maybe I can do some of these as well, just to kind of continue them a little bit more. I'm thinking like blast processing. That's kind of my vision for these little blocks here. Or like deadlocked or something, you know, like that type of style of it. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. And then I can probably add some pillars in amongst it as well. Okay, in my everlasting quest to make this transition more consistent, I'm going to do this and I kind of want to do that, but that's not going to fit. So maybe I can do that. Pretty much the goal of adding in these little pillars here is to incentivize the player to not be low there because if you're low you kind of like I don't know you like went along the slopes as the ball in a weird way and it kind of bugged out so that's not going to happen here you're just going to die to the spikes and hopefully that'll feel less buggy and more fair all right and for this final bit I think it's just going to be a little bit more of the same type of structuring yeah nothing too exciting to be honest 
All right, so that is that structuring done. It's nothing super fancy, but it's there. I'm happy with it. Now for this part, I think I'm just gonna do like very basic, like chain there. And then this is just gonna be like ground that will probably move into place from the bottom. And then maybe I could even make this guy like a little club step monster type thing with one eye. You know, those are seen in club step. They're kind of neat. Yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna do that. And um, that's pretty much the structuring done. So pretty much the gameplay done. Yeah, wow. You know what? I think it's turned out pretty pretty well. I think it's decently fun. And will I- oh, dude, that club step monster is lined up perfectly. That's beautiful. Um, but yeah, will I end up changing things later on? Maybe I might change some of this structuring when I gum when it comes to like actually decorating the level. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty good. Let's give the whole thing a look. Okay, seven deaths, dude. This level is actually really hard. Just that no clip run took me like quite a few attempts actually. That took a while. Let me see how many attempts, hang on. 26 attempts to do a no clip run. Dude, okay, yeah. Uh, this might be extreme demon, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to end this episode off here. Next episode, I'll be decorating that whole jewel, not like half of it or anything. I'm gonna decorate the whole thing. And then it's just onto the last couple parts, which I have a couple really cool ideas for that. So yeah, really keen for it. And then yeah, actually gonna be finishing a level relatively soon, which I'm super keen for. And then I've got another project that I'm really, really excited for. Not announcing what it is yet, but trust me, it's going to be a cool one. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed. Huge thank you to all of the members, especially Infdu. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.